All right, so we'll get started. So um, this is based on, on how I do video analysis. Now it's just my way. Um, I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm not saying it's what everybody does. It's just how, how we tend to do it this season. Um, during the session, if you want to ask questions, please do so. And if I think we need to get on, back on track, then I'll just uh, try and hit it back in that direction. But um, what, I, what, I, what I decided to do was to go through a typical week for us when it comes to use, how, we, how we use video. And so I picked on the Atlanta game. Um, and I'll just show you everything that we did for that week. There's no secrets. There's no uh, nothing hiding. It's just, just the process that we use in order to um, try and build the best way we can for that game. So when we talk about Atlanta players, there's nothing personal around that. It's just how we wanted to, uh, to attack them or, or things or common things that we saw in use for that team and how we wanted to do it. So we, um, we a lot of this is, is player driven. Um, so players have a, have a big, have a big say in this and um, as the season was getting on more and more so, to be honest, um, was how we, how we're trying to drive it. So how, how it works is that during the week of, I would have um, watched our game from the week before at least two or three times. And then I cut key clips and review those with the players and the leaders in the leaders group. And I'll go through that at the end with you after how we review Atlanta. So how we preview Atlanta is that I work two weeks ahead of myself. So um, two weeks before I've watched all of Atlanta's games and then I try and look for themes. I try and avoid looking for one-offs because one-offs are exactly that. And so I try to look for themes in terms of, from my attack point of view, how the defense sets up, um, what sort of line speed they use, uh, what sort of set piece defense they use. So any common themes I can see from an attack point of view is how I, is how I break it down. Um, I look at their kick strategy, I look at their set piece defense, and then they set up from like phase defense. And then the leaders go through those clips that I've shared with them and they come up and they bring to me what they think the game plan should be based on those clips that I've shared with them in the foundations. And they obviously watch the opposition teams play as well and they might have something different. And so we, we have an open discussion around that. We don't always agree. Um, so for example, leading into Atlanta, Danny and Jason, who are my two attack drivers, they had a disagreement about a few things. Not a, it wasn't an argument, it's just they had different points of view on how it should be done. Um, and that was quite common with those two, that they liked to challenge each other. For me, it was great, because um, it was always done really well how they did it. Um, they're quite different people, but they, the, their combination on the field was, was um, was what mattered most and was what was really good. So, but those two drove, drove my attack. So I wanna show you is the clips that we chose to show the team before Atlanta. Now the clips will seem quite boring and, and you wonder why we've chosen these particular clips. But like I said, there's certain things about our game we felt that we could manipulate in Atlanta's game. And so that's the, and these are the clips just to show to the team the, the why we're doing what we're gonna do. So we, and, and after I've shown you these clips, I'll show you the what we're gonna do. But this was the why we were gonna do what we're gonna do. Does that make sense so far? Anybody got any questions around there? Um, if you can just make sure there's nobody else waiting to get in. I mean, yeah, I've been admitting them as we're going. Ken, as I've okay. been yawning, good, I've been admitting good. them, Thank so you. hopefully we're all okay. So the first thing we looked at with Atlanta is we tried to get a basic breakdown of them. Now, they're, they're quite, they were quite a deliberate team. So I watched four of their matches and a very, very structured team, probably the most structured team in MLR. And they had a very deliberate kick strategy. So uh, what I'll do, again at 10 points can you all see that, table, that there? Arrows, tied with DC at 13. So, Rugby ATL win, they will... so this is quite a common theme for Atlanta. So what we're looking for here is they play very little rugby in their own half and they have a very deliberate setup like this and they kick straight down the middle of the field. So a common theme. I want to show you the next clip. Again, like I said earlier, we're looking for themes rather than one-offs. Send this off and Toronto two tries to start the second half and now... So Suddenly, ATL and the crowd getting some momentum like they did a week ago via a card. 
Ferguson off. I was going to have to go with Raleigh Donardo, the five foot five scrum half. You can see him there, number 21. He's seven's experience, not only the third string scrum half with behind McKenzie and Ferguson, but being called into action here in a very key. So you see um, a real common theme of their game was not to play in their own half and to kick, unlike most teams, straight down the middle of the field. So what we decided to do with that is that we wanted to use that because their set piece was really, Atlanta's set piece was really strong. They've got some really high stats um, around that. So we want to take any ball they could give us. And so we based it on the halfway line. So our idea was to beat them to that half li halfway line in a race is what we called it. So our race was to get back before them and to get to halfway before them. Going straight to Adams. And then from that side there, we just looked at the defensive Montez setup from there. And from there, anyone to juice what we wanted to do from those sort of situations where we wanted to put the ball after that. Just looking at that picture there. Don't worry, there's no wrong answers. Well, there are, but I won't, I won't jump down your throat. We don't see the game film. We just see the, uh, the list. Oh, you don't see the picture? No. You don't, see the, you don't see the video running on the screen? No, sir. Ah, sorry then. How do I... Uh, we saw it all before, but right now we don't. Oh, okay. Can you see that? Joey? Yes. Okay. So based on that picture there, you can see they've got around eight players in a very narrow space. So our plan there was to, from these phases, we want to work to edges. Basically is what we're trying to do. And, and what that does is help us organize our attack a lot easier. And it also makes them work a bit harder. So if they wanted to kick, we wanted to retrieve. We were going to take that kick and we were going to play. We decided we didn't want to kick back to them. We wanted to play. Any questions on that? Okay. On your, real quick, when they kick down the middle and you say you want to play the edges, does that mean when they kick down the middle, work it to one inside of one fifteen, then work it to the other 15? Correct. So what the, 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 one of the reasons for us is that they are a very structured defense, Joey. So we were trying to group them and, and get their slower players who are quite robotic into the middle of the park if we could. And that's when we thought we could get most, most dividends, really. Um, but it's a, and so we just kept playing these, and, and this was... Can you see that one? See that clip there? Now I can, yep. Yep, so that's New York. They're playing there. Lots of light wingers on this team, on this rugby Atlanta team. Start again with rugby ATL. Uko Uka takes it, and then we'll move it around now for the kick down field. A few uh, life bases at. So similar concept, different kicker. So left foot kicker. So working from the right side of the field. Uh, again, kicking deep, not trying to find touch deliberately. And so again, we wanted to, to beat them to that race to halfway, if we could. And from there, we wanted to play. Andrew. Yes. Andrew, I saw um, during the season, I saw Mongo and uh, Jameson um, wide in those channels as well. Um, having the loose forwards getting into the, into the wide channels, is that by design also in flooding that area? Yeah, so our, um, our policy on, on counter, uh, Roly, is that uh, seven and eight or eight and six will always go to the wide edges. Type five always go back to the middle. So if, the, the, if it's 15 or 10, usually retrieving the ball, um, they know they've got an out by going to the middle of the park because the type five will be there. The mid, our midfield will go away from the ball. So what I mean by that, if the ball's kicked to the left side, and midfield will always go to the right side of the field just to open up the field and create width for us. So it was a, a, it's quite a, um, a common way to counter, but for us it was just... It just got us back into shape really quickly, Roly, by having those, those clarified roles for those particular players. Well, you had a couple of good lads there and the loose forwards to, to complement it as well. So um, worked out well. Yeah, yeah. And so that's, again, one of the reasons we wanted to keep the ball against, um, against Atlanta. And I'll, I'll go over some of, the, um, some of the stats in a moment around that. And then we looked for how, how we could penetrate. So where are they best? to be penetrated. So this is against Toronto. Again, what I do is I look for groupings in the defense. Now Atlanta, again, they're actually a very good defensive side, but they do 
they do tend to rush, say, three up, three out from a ruck. And so when teams unstructure on them is when they become vulnerable. So here, they get quite robotic in their tight forwards. And this is, a, obviously, he's quite quick, this player from Toronto, but he picks on a tight forward. And they do present a few opportunities like that from unstructured type play that we felt we, were, we could probably do better than Toronto. And then from there, we look at um, just typical defensive shape. And so the clip I'm going to show you, there's nothing that exciting about it, but what it does gave us, and it was probably the, the best cue to their patterns of defense, is if you watch them, they tend to defend really, really physical and really hard from about three or four out from the ruck. So we wanted to try and play on the outside of them. So part of our plan, and I'll show you that preview in a moment, based on what we see from these clips here, and this is just one example. We obviously looked at a few of them, but when we show the team, I'll only show them one. So rather than the team having to look at a whole lot of clips, I'll show them only one. That makes sense. So this was a typical defensive setup from Atlanta, but it does show a few vulnerabilities. Toronto, enjoying a bit of possession here. They are down by four, though. It's their first matchup with an Eastern Conference opponent after a visit to Vegas so against Houston, along with a visit to Austin and Seattle last week. Manuel Diana with the carry. We haven't heard much from him today. They very well last week against Seattle. So what I'm looking at here in particular is their A, B, and C defender. Can you see the cursor there, everybody? So that defender, that defender, and that defender are the three keys I'm looking at. One, how they align. Two, how quickly they align and where they want to apply pressure from. And so that's that rush we're seeing. This guy here, he's about three or four out from the ruck. Pretty common theme for them was to push really hard to try and squeeze attacks back inside. He's again getting more involved here at the start of the second half. If you're going to go on international, two tries at the 2019 World Cup. So again, if you watch them, they actually realign really, really well around here. But if you look, we, we call it narrow D. So that if you look at all the defenders, they're actually inside that 15 meter mark, apart from the winger who sits quite deep. Now for us, the way we play, that, that really interests us. So that's some sort of an area we generally like to go to through generally our centers, through uh, DTS and through our wingers. We'll generally try and manipulate that space if we can. You still see that screen? Okay. So again, we, I'll explain in a minute what we're looking for here as well. Moving ahead, he had the early try in this matchup, his first of the season. So again, like I said, those wide quarters now, we're starting to find space, so that's what starts to excite us a little bit. <laughs> Toronto continues their attack, almost breaking free with De La Vega, the Argentine. Now it's Asiata taking it a few meters ahead. Much better work here from Toronto. His flat pass is getting across the game line. And there's the space that we would have liked created. Now with Atlanta, we knew that they are very structured. After seven phases though, they start to lose structure. Now we find that information not just from video, but from stats that are released by the MLR every week. We know that they, they're broken. If, if you can last for them against seven phases, you, you're quite likely to break, um, which again suited us the way we play. Um, and that was just proving these sort of facts here. They actually, Toronto make an error here, but they've actually created through doing nothing really, really special. They've created that space through endurance really. And then the final clip we'll look at as, set, as a set piece clip. And so uh, it's a bit of a question time. So from this, it's a line out here. What do you think we're looking for in this line out? So it's a New York ball. I want to see your designated jumpers. 
like who their big defender is. Yep. Anything else we're looking for? What their back three are doing? Yep. Another key area we're looking for. One more area. Who's at the scrum half position, perhaps? Yeah. Related to that, yes. And what they do. So some teams use a nine back there. Sometimes use a seven or a two. But it's also the speed and where they connect from. So if we watch this, this particular clip here, again, we're looking for a theme, not just one offs, but this is a theme for them. So you can see that's their nine. That's the nine there. And if I just take it back a little bit. So it's that little scene we're looking at between the line out, which is covered by our pictures, unfortunately. The line out and what's coming forward there. Mm -hmm. So the nine tends to fly from that line out. So the nine defends at the back. So it's that space there we look to attack. Now the next thing we look for is what do they do afterwards? The thing that excites us here is if you look at the short side, majority of the defenders are inside the 15 meter line there. And I'll show you why that's important to us when we go through the actual game tape. So we're actually looking at that particular space there, uh, outside there. That's a very athletic pirouette by Mr. Vassar over there. Still got it. So any questions about that so far? Make sense, everybody? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to show you is from those clips, and like I said, that's taken, that's taken us weeks to get all that put together um, as coaches, and then the players, we, we, we don't expect the players to watch every single game of, of Atlanta, for example. We'll show them key ideas that we think, and they've, they've got to have a game plan based around that. So then we go to our game plan based on that, and this was the game plan we came up with, and this was the week before. Can you see that? No, no, yeah. That's your dashboard, it's all see. Okay, what's happening here? So how are we looking there? Still the same screen. Can you see that? For some reason it's pausing on a a PowerPoint for some reason. Uh, won't let me share it. I wonder if you minimize your dashboard, um, or are you, are you running your presentation through your? So I just put it on my normal screen. Ken, is there anything else I can do? Can you see the screen there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when I when I go to a PowerPoint screen, it tends to for some reason it pauses the share. Yeah. Um, there's probably, I think there is a setting on your shared screen where you can just share just an application or your entire screen. Uh, okay. It might be just set on just the application. That makes sense? Oh, I see. Yeah. Got you. Got you. We're all still learning this technology. There you go. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is our game plan we present to the players. Um, now, this is shared between myself and our tech, our tech group, which is made up about five players. And so what we say is our, our most important one is always secure set piece. Now for us, that was obviously an issue all season, our set piece, and we, we don't hide from that. Our scrum was the worst in the league and our lineup was I think third worst in the league. So we knew we struggled there. So it'd been a, a massive work on all season to work that. But one of the other key points we wanted to win races was out work Atlanta. Because they're such a structured robotic team, we felt we could probably um, outwork them and beat them, beat them around corners. The other one was uh, the ball carrier. We needed, we wanted to play out the back a lot. So our snap ball is our back ball. As I said to you in that earlier when I showed you that video, um, they tend to want to push hard on the third, uh, from third defender. So we wanted to play outside that. 
The other one here was stress their set piece defense. And that's where I showed you the clip with the nine flies. So blue plus one, white rumble. Those are basically what we call our starter moves that we usually, we usually play. And Danny came up with blue plus one, which is where we have a, a core move called blue. And blue plus one is just a variation on that particular starter. Transition plays um, was basically our, our kick receipt. We knew they were going to kick back to us. So we wanted to work to edges from those particular kick plays. And then what we knew they would do, they're very good at the breakdown. They were going to try and muscle us. We knew that because they were bigger than us. And so we had to be accurate there. As I've talked about a lot, they were going to kick deep to us. So we wanted to work hard back to, in order to go forward. And they were going to be deliberate. So we wanted to hold the ball for long periods of time. From our stats, we knew we were the only team in the league that scored more than one try after 10 phases. So in five games, we scored three tries from 10 phases plus. So we felt against Atlanta, we knew they got unstructured after seven phases. So we wanted to hold the ball for long periods of play in order to break them up in that regard. Now the little quote down the bottom, we have a theme each week and our theme this week was based on uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather in terms of wanting to really scope, go into the fight and stay in the fight. We'd sort of, the week before against Austin, we were up by 23 points at half time and we let them back in the game. So we wanted to finish off Atlanta because we knew they were the one team that would stick with us the whole game. And if we didn't stay in a fight, then we were probably going to lose that game. So we show those bullet points to the team in a meeting based on the video. And the players will present this with me just giving a little extra input. Is there any questions about that? Are, are you going to get to the point where um, you're talking about how you're going to attack their defensive setup on the lineouts or that the inside of 15? Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. All right, I don't want to jump ahead. So no, no, you're right. So these are here. It's a good question. These these plays here, blue plus one, white rumble, and spangled, are all basically executing from a lineout or scrum. Oh, okay. So Got without it. actually explaining what it actually is, um, these are all trying to execute to to manipulate that defense from those lineouts and 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 one in particular from a scrum. Red, blue, and grey. These are all we call our our starter plays or our maps. So what we do for our attack is we, 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 we pre-call three, three phases. After three phases, we play what's in front of us with a basic uh, game plan that we've had during that week. And so we just pick the particular game plan we think is going to be most effective for those particular teams. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. I have a question, Coach. Go. Um, these, these plays, Blue Plus One and everything else, are they plays that you've already had in your arsenal and then you're using these plays to, for this specific team? Or will you add a play each week that A, is something new that the league hasn't seen and B, is a play that specific towards that team that you're about to face? Yeah, good question. So we have a basic launch called Blue. Now, Blue plus one is just a slight variation on that. So we've worked on Blue all year. So the, every player knows what Blue is, knows how it's structured, knows how it works. And then for this particular game, we just added a slight variation onto it. And we'll do that for other calls as well. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Perfect. This is our tech plan from lineouts and the, the types of lineouts we wanted to call in those particular zones. So the red zone's our attack area, the white zone's our exit area. The red words down the bottom, that's our kicking, our kicking strategy from those particular areas, whatever it may be. So you can see we keep it really simple for here. Um, we tended to want to use four and fives in our defensive zones. This is the only game, Atlanta was the only game where we had more than two lineout calls in our orange zone. So we had three lineouts, a four, a five, and a seven, and a spangled is just an option off, of, off a, off a lineout. And you can see there, we're looking to, to look to attack the connecting seam from those lineouts. And from here, um, when we got the opportunity, we wanted to more, we wanted to rumble from those particular areas from attack depending on what was called by our, our nine and 10. So the players will have a copy of that as well. So that's basically their map of what's going to happen from lineouts, where the options are and what sort of players we want to attack from based on video. Any questions around any of that? Hey, yeah, coach, can you talk more about seams? Yeah, so the seams we look for is where the basically the, the defensive line or the, or the back line from a line out connects to the front, the actual line out itself. 
So that's so as you know, the, the defense the defense line has to be 10 meters back from the line out. And it's where that connects with the actual line out, there's often space in there. Now some teams actually join that seam really, really well. They zip it really quickly so you have an issue in your space there. Some teams don't, so they'll fly from the back of the line out and leave a really big hole in there. And you can actually get easy yardage in order just to get on the front foot. So the goal from attacking that seam is not to bust the line. If we do bust the line, that's a bonus. But the idea is to actually just get uh, front foot ball to get over gain line. And then we're the sort of team that we feel if we're on top of it, once we're on top of a team, we're getting gain line on them. That's when we're at our most dangerous. Oh, thank you, Coach. Does that answer that question? Yes, sir. Perfect. All right. Now, hopefully this works. Now, these are the actual clips from the Atlanta game that we showed in our review. And uh, if I get this right, hopefully you guys can, um, can see uh, what we actually went through. Okay. I was trying to bring that screen up, uh, everybody. Can everybody see that screen? Yep. So attack review, has that come up? Yes. Okay. So basically this is the review we had after Atlanta. So after going through those bullet points you've just seen, obviously, like we said, key things there, we wanted to hold on to the ball for long periods. We had certain zones of the fields we wanted to attack from. Uh, we wanted to play out the back of them as much as we could and we had to secure our set piece. So some key points that we wanted to do, and when we re review, we sort of go back to those key points in terms of what we're reviewing. Um, so there's an actual lo a logical sequence to what we're reviewing rather than just picking random things. Also, a key part of a, of a review for us was to look forward to the next week to make sure that uh, there was areas we thought we needed to do better in would actually address those as well. So this is the review. Again, this is let the review part is led by me. The previews led by players, reviews led by me, because often players, uh, we, we held individuals accountable. So if uh, Mungo didn't do a job, then I'd actually name Mungo in that team meeting. Now, I can't expect players to do that um, every week because uh, that's tough on players to do when they've actually got to go to war with those guys. But um, I had no such feelings. The players knew it was never personal. We made that really, really clear. Uh, we had a session at the start of the year about that and how players should, should address that and that was like, led by players and the players wanted to be, if they're not doing their job they wanted to be pulled out and they wanted to be made accountable. So it wasn't a hate session, it wasn't an attack session at all, it was just, you need to do this better. I think one of the things that Scott Lawrence and Atlanta were concerned about was the edge play of Old Glory and how dangerous they were with their backs on the edge. And they really want to do a job defending that today. Oh, very nicely played at the back of Fiona Shields. Pass has got a hand as now we have a little deflection. The missile goes forward. We talk about some transition play. So what do you think my comment to the players was over that particular play? Oh, James said no 50-50 balls? Yeah, we talked about wanting to hold on to the ball. Now, this was a set play that Mikey had actually come up with our hooker. So it was a play that he had come up with that he thought was that it could actually expose that scene that we talked about with Atlanta. So it was a deliberate play to go over the back to Jamison, and it worked well. But all we needed was Jamison to hold the ball and just build on that, like we said, the momentum we'd already created from that set piece um, rather than throw the ball away like we did. So that was... The message there is staying on game plan, making better calls can get up. in terms of um, in terms of how, how we address Whoever that. Can get a hold of so I know it looks a bit unstructured, but it actually was was a set was a set play. They tried to go, couldn't go, and now they have to use a substitution. That one tips comes down. Anna Schultz. Is it Tala? Flat. Tala Mao. Also flat, Takata Simpson. Any thoughts about what I was going to say about this particular play? I think you would be pretty happy. Uh, you went out wide. Uh, you were trying to play out past their defense. You made the ground, but I'm not sure if it, if it did it go to touch. I'm not sure. Yeah, yes, it did, it did. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. So, pretty, that. <laughs> yeah. Pretty ambitious trying to run out of your, you know, your own goal line. Yeah, we were. I was actually really happy with that part of it. I, I didn't actually mind the yeah, play itself because we talked about there'd be space on, on edges and obviously it's turnover ball. It was, their, it was their line out. So it was turnover ball. I had a crack at Threaten here um, because he didn't need to throw a skip pass here. So if you look, if you look at this shape here, you look at where Threaten get that, gets that ball there. One, he could go himself because the center's beaten. Their, their center there, he's gone. Was it a shape? So Threaten could have held that, but he could have just given it to Renata just outside him there. Now, Renz right. is quick enough. Right. He was going to make some real damage there, Renata. And, and instead, we go to a wide pass and defense just drifts. Yeah. So I had no issue with the actual play at all. My issue was with, with Threaten and with Dylan for going out. So those two, I had a bit of a pop at in the review about that. Fair, fair or unfair? It's fair comment. Yeah, Pretty fair. fair comment. Um, <laughs> um, oh, uh, sorry, Joey, go ahead. Okay. So, oh, thank you, Roy. Uh, is a situation where they took your game plan um, of attacking the edge as opposed to what they see on the field? Yeah, possibly. Uh, possibly. I think, you know, Threaten's actually got a beautiful – he's got a great skill set threatened for a big man. He's got a beautiful pass on him, and also that pass is on the button. And I think that they just wanted to get the ball wide quickly because we'd often talked about that from turnover, getting the ball as wide as we could. But there's just a better option there in terms of doing that. Uh, Andrew, would you prefer DTS there just to be on the shoulder of Ram and then, and then immediately drift out uh, to be the outside man? Or would you want him coming back on the inside pre preferably? Yeah, so there, obviously the position is to get gets the ball, but he's actually got to work hard to stay in there. He's got to, he's got to start coming inside now. And just okay. using, he's, he's got enough support there. The breakdown's going to be safe. So, but the last thing I want is to give Atlanta another line out inside their attacking half. At that stage, you've got to score line at that stage of the game, just after half time. It's best to consolidate those periods of time. Uh, coach, quick question. Um, it seemed like um, the guy in the middle wasn't expecting the ball. So is there a play that threatened in the back three knew that I'm going to miss? Uh, there would have been a call. I'd say the calls come from possibly DTS. Right. Uh, I'd expect Renz to take some responsibility there too because he, he can see it's just a hands. So right. he but he, hands on. Just, yeah, just looking at his hands were down. He yeah. already saw that Threaten was throwing the miss pass. So I was wondering, yeah. wondering if there was a, like a pre-call from the backs that you know, I'm, I'm throwing it wide. I'd say there probably was. Which... Uh, which sort of frustrates me a little bit more. We train, we do the skills like these with these type of situations every week for about half an hour every week, if not more. So, to me, those are great attacking opportunities. I wonder if Threaten just sees that the playing. winger is uncovered. Sorry, say again? I, I wonder if Threaten just sees that the winger was uncovered and try to get the pass to him in time to break down the sideline. Obviously, yeah. the defense worked. Yeah. In fairness to Threaten, he, he, he talked about this before I even brought it up on the screen. So he knew exactly what he should have done, <laughs> which is credit. You know, that's just that – he's, he's, a, he's a top man, Threaten. He takes – he's accountable. That's why he's a leader, because he, he, he puts his hand up first, um, which, which is always what, exactly what you want. Okay, so – actually, I'll go back. Sorry about that. Coach, why are you pulling that one up? Uh, with a quick turnover ball like that, you know the back three are up and you're deep in your territory. I know you want to keep ball in hand, but would a box kick just to switch the field right there? Is that not a good option? Oh, it's, it's, an, it's an, an option. Um, we feel our back three is so dangerous. They're so good with ball in hand. Why not, why not just let them keep it? But it is, it is an option, if that makes sense. So, uh, in makers, yeah. Obviously, everybody knows it's no secret our scrum was a was an issue all season. <coughs> so Jamison worked really hard on these particular plays. But the reason I want to show you this, one of our goals, like I said, was to hold the ball for long periods of play. If you watch this play, at times we go nowhere. But what we do do really well is we keep recycling ball until we see the opportunity. Comes alive here at Cardinal Stadium. 
So what I'll do, I'll let the, I'll let the clip play. There's a really handsome man in the background there. And then, um, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll, take, we'll take questions after the clip's play. So thoughts, if we go back to our attack points that we discussed before the match, what are your thoughts on that particular play? Yeah, great ball retention. Yeah. Um, spreading, spreading the defense out every phase. Yeah. Patience. Yeah, it was probably a key one for us that I wanted to reward the players with, was patience. And then, just, you know, we went to the edge multiple times, not necessarily um, just throwing the ball sideline to sideline, but go one phase, then go back to an edge, go another phase, go back to an edge. So I thought it's we... It's almost like you're, te well. you're testing an edge and then as soon as that edge was not one, you went back to where your support was. Yeah. yeah. Plus it was at the back most of the time. Yes. Yeah. You see, at times we, we, went, we didn't go anywhere, but I was really happy we just maintained ball because I knew if we could maintain ball, they'd break somewhere. Oh, she, did you give uh, Declan the freedom to play both sides of the field and, yeah. and all yeah, that? Yeah, exactly. Declan, Declan does what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> when, he's, when he's that good, he can do whatever he wants. No, nah, we, we talked about Declan's role. I coached Declan for Waikato at Mitre 10 Cup level, so we knew each other pretty well. So it was always my plan to use him like that. He's got a massive motor on him, Declan. Um, he can run all day. He's one of the fittest in the team. He's got the best feet. So, you know, for a guy like that, he can just do what he wants. All the wingers had pretty much free reign if they wanted to, but Declan's just the one who made the most of it. He's the size of a centre. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Very much so. Um, but we held our width really well, and it was Jason who probably manipulated the space there. He had a mismatch on a small number, and uh, he, created, he created an offload for, you know, for, that, for that initial line break. Any other questions about that clip? So you can see the first two clips, what I generally do is put the negatives first, and then I start to, to, put, to reaffirm any positives that we do. Well, you, I was just going to say, you definitely outworked them on that by maintaining all that possession, not turning the ball over, running that many phases. That's right. The only negative there is, is Jason, we, we had a pop at Jason because you didn't need to throw that big long pass we right. scored. So that was the only negative from it, really. Um, but again, he put his hand up before anybody else did about what he did wrong, which was good to hear. Nancy. Ignore Nancy, she's not part of the clip really. <laughs> hey, from. Fitzy. <laughs> Behind the award show was very uh, laced with humility. Talk about getting more women and girls involved in the sport of rugby. Uh, it's such a fun sport, and so the key is getting uh, exposed to it at a young age, and it's starting to grow in the youth, youth ages. Bye. No idea why I showed that clip. 
I mean, box kicking was perfect with the, the chase. Hard work by Declan. Get him out of bounds. Get the ball back. Yeah. Get the ball back. Yep. Yeah, the bit, I'm not a great fan of the box kick, to be honest, because it's uh, it needs to be done perfectly in order for it to, to pay dividends. And Declan and Danny had worked on this by themselves in uh, what we call OG15, which is at the end of training, the players spend 15 minutes doing skill work. And so they've just been practicing and practicing for the weeks leading up to this. So I had to reward them. Perfect box kick, perfect defense from Declan, pushing a guy out. So again, it's just a bit of a reward for guys who've worked hard on trying to achieve a set, a set skill and how it should be done. Also, I wanted to reward a chase line, which is exactly as it should be. You can see it's pushed, it's hard, and it's organized. So we'd beaten Atlanta. Atlanta's still got these two players to come back. We'd beaten them in terms of that gain line area there. So that was just a reward for, for a little thing. It's just such a fun. As he corrals him into the top, 10 out from the line. Larson passes and got a hand. Sits up to Kuali, though. Almost busts through under the post. A big quick hands will do it. O'Donnell, draw a pass, try in the corner. It is DT. What a score. So the reason I showed that one is uh, you saw on the... Um, oh, look at Paul Sheehy. He's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I showed that one, you saw in the preview, I talked about staying focused, keeping yourself alive. And I thought Tavita did that particularly well in this particular clip. Um, so hence why I wanted to, to just, again, reward him for doing what, we'd, what had been asked. So he, he sort of... The pass wasn't great because he kept himself alive. He got rewarded for it. So it was just part of that... USA is our, our core shape off nine and ten. We have what's called a USA shape based on the old glory theme. And uh, he'd keep that movement going. So that was, again, just a reward for if you keep yourself alive, what happens. Coach, that's why. Was there a harder worker than... Number, number ten, Cheeky. Oh, yeah. I guess so. Coleman having some little darts. If he can get a runner inside of him, he's causing the defense to... Okay, I'll play this whole clip through. Um, just so you know, this is blue plus one. So we talked about that blue plus one. Well, this is okay. This is it, huh? I think there's some room there to attack that space. So Harley Davidson, Xander Bank, Skullfrank, that blind winger needs to be following him across the field. And those guys can do some damage if they get their hands on the ball in space. And last they come back the other way. Sitala yeah. loops. Okay. Zooms in. This is where he's at his best. Flips that one back inside. Look at the speed. Oh, that's the Abrose play. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> so, no, I don't mind telling people here. Blue is a play we use, which goes midfield, one around the corner, then we come back to the back to where the lineout was as, as a core blue move. Now, what Danny. We, and we generally do it to keep defences honest. But Danny wanted to, to... He saw that Atlanta generally stayed quite narrow and, and, and they bite. We call they bite. Hence why we also wanted to play up the back. So this... Danny and Jason had created a blue plus one before and Danny had just added his own little uh, spectrum onto this of how he wanted it to look. So it was uh, a Danny a Danny Tusitala uh, special, basically. So if I yeah. just take it back... To attack here. That space. So you see, there's our lineup play. It's a it's a core. Right. Um, it's a it's a five man uh, lineup there. Yeah. There's a midfield set. We preordain who's going to clean that ruck as well, so they all know. And those guys can do some damage if they One around the corner. So we'd had a big chat to our tight head props. In this case, Gordy about having to work hard here. If you look at their their players there, Gordy's job was to hold 18, and, and this guy. This guy here, make sure they didn't, they didn't get a chance to chase out on Danny. Okay. And then Kieran Hearn, he'd worked really hard just to making sure his lines were really honest off these balls. So Danny was always going to come here. DTS is hiding. So we always put our fullback, we hide him. And we always know that the, these guys here, they bite pretty hard. Atlanta, like I said, they try to rush from third defender. So we knew they would bite. If we could hold them, there's always going to be space out the back. You can see 23, he bites really hard on Kieran here as well, which makes it. 
And then Wren does a great job. He's, he's super fast, but here, if you watch the speed he puts on and the angle he runs, um, it's what sort of creates. There's Danny, you can see there, cheating again. So Danny just runs straight up the middle of the field just about every time he ends himself there. Typical nine, just cheats as much as he can. So he'll <laughs> always run that track through the middle of the park. Poor Mikey, our hooker, he gets stuck out here. He's actually supposed to receive the ball. So if we go back to the points we wanted to expose them to, where we knew they pushed hard on D, they're vulnerable on their edges, and that came together from players actually put that together. So uh, to work that out, that was that process we used there. Any questions, anybody? Uh, I have a question. I missed the first 10 minutes, so this may uh, be a stupid question, but uh, Andrew, when you go into the game uh, or go into your film session, do you have like a checklist of, okay, uh, I got to look at all the uh, set, all the restarts, whether they're sets, lineouts, et cetera, figure out how we want to attack and how we want to defend uh, those and then look at the general phase play to see if you see any tendencies that uh, play to your team's advantages either on attack or defense. Uh, yes, we do, Lee. So uh, we worked two weeks ahead of ourselves. So I was, I was watching Atlanta the week before and watched all their games. And we just look for th any themes, Lee. We don't look for one-offs. We look for themes. Right, right. Defensive coach looks at their attack. I look at their defense. And our forwards coach looks at their set piece and where they, what they do and where they go there. And we also have the players involved in that particular one as well. Players will go through, but they'll look at clips. So I won't make them watch whole games, Lee, because... Do you, uh, do you have? Do you use the software to code that? Put all the sets together. And... Yeah, yeah, that's a massive advantage, Lee. I guess we have like over high school is that we use a software called Sports Code. Okay. Um, which is a huge help in terms of being able to prepare all that. To be honest, Lee. So um, yes, we, we've got software for that. Huddle does a similar job. So Huddle's available for schools and and colleges as well. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not as expensive as Sports Code. Um, and we also have a guy, we have analysts who cut it up for us too, Lee. So what we get, actually I'll show you what we get. Um, so when we get it back and I look at the game, we get what's called the raw footage. Right. And it's basically, if you can see, can you see that screen there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's, a, that's a coded game, basically what you saw there. So these are all codes here. That we can right, see. right. So I can go through each player's, every act of every player, um, the position, Atlanta penalties, position, scrum attacks, uh, where they went, where they go. So I click on a particular box and it comes up and shows me what happens in that particular play. Right. So it's, it's, it's with the, what, are, what are the boxes for the individual players? It just shows an action. Okay. So if I just hover the, the icon over that particular clip there, it says player four, it was a ball carry. A ball okay. carry from a set piece play. Okay. All right. And then so, and then from there, I'll take our particular clips and, and put it together in, in basically a 10 minute preview or a 10 minute review league. We try not to have the reviews or previews go more than half an hour. Right. Sometimes they do, unfortunately, if, when players want to really discuss something. Yeah. I won't, I won't let the coaches talk for that long. It'll be generally from players. Okay, that's cool. Anything else on that? Anybody? So, Coach, on that particular last line out you scored on, I mean, that was directly from what you showed off in, like, the first five minutes from that yeah. piece line out. Yes. Your tendency to drift across and kind of leave – 15 open? Uh, yeah. 15 meters open? Okay. Yeah. So you knew you were going to run a blue on them, midfield, facing their tennis. Yeah, we're always going to play with that blue at some stage during the game. We actually tried it two or three times before, but we just run a normal blue. We hadn't run a blue plus one. So it was all about grouping defenses until we, we, we played that particular one. Hey, Ken, when we do uh, halftime minis, it damn well better see you coding the film after. 
no, I don't, don't go. tempt me, man. It's, I, I used to, well, you know, I didn't have like the, you know, what you have in your sports cutting, but I'm going to watch a lot of video and do our own cutting on by paper. Yeah. Look, you, you're going to watch a lot of video. Um, you know, and, and I used to do it when I coached age group teams, whatever else. You, you tend to, that's the biggest part of my week as well as dealing one-on-one -on -one with players is, is basically watching video um, and just trying to pick out themes. And then, but like I said, when I show to players or, or we talk as a group, the leaders groups, we try and keep it so it's uh, a manageable concentration point for them rather than trying to give them too much. Well, the key is you got somebody to cut it up for you and give you the raw footage. Correctly, you, know? you did right. You did right. Yeah, because that's very lot. time consuming. Yes, it is. It is. So that's the process we use. The process, like I said, and it's just my process. It's not the only way to do it. Um, you know, other coaches will drive it all themselves. Other coaches will make all the, the players do it, do everything. Some like me do a bit of a mixture of both. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong way. It's what suits your teams. I'm lucky I had really good leaders. So attack leaders, Jason, Danny, DTS, uh, they tended to, to have a, an input, a lot of input and, and present to the teams. Um, Jason presented every week the kicking plan as well we had for each week. Um, and defence, similar to Karen Hearn led the defence with Threaten, and they'd present each week the, the defence plan for those particular games as well. Any other questions, anybody? Hey, Coach, um, somebody in the chat group, uh, Matt Robinette, asked, watching your, he said, watching your video, your opponent's video, this particular session was talking about watching the opponent's defensive tendencies. Yeah. Right? I imagine you have a similar session where you're watching attack tendencies and creating your own defense. Exactly right. So uh, Jake Mangan ran our defense. So he would just do the exact opposite of what I've just done. He'd focus on the team's attack and present very similar. Um, so he'd have clips uh, that he'd show that he'd already shown his, um, his leadership group and they'd present back exactly the same process but around the D. I think we just found our next session. <laughs> Anything else, anybody? Oh, well done. Um, can you hey, hear me Tim, will, will a link be available uh, for this recording that I can send out to my other coaches? Yes. Yes. Okay, gonna, great. Um, I think Hope has said she was going to process it by Wednesday or Thursday. So it'll okay, just perfect. be a little bit. Thank you. Hey, one yeah, question. Great, uh, coach. great session. Listen. Uh, coach, yeah. Um, how many patterns do you have um, knowing that everyone's watching film on you in, on, in the league? And, yeah, just how many basic patterns do you have so you can switch it up every weekend? Or, or do you just do variations on certain ones you have already? Yeah, so we have four. Four basic patterns we'll run. And we'll have variations off all four. We'll often only run two in a game. We won't run all four in a game. They'll be in our toolbox, so to speak, so we can pull them out if we have to. But generally, we've programmed only two, maybe three for a particular game. Atlanta was one of the few games we had everything available. Because it's such a structured defense, a very deliberate defense, we thought they would just keep everything, all options live. Um, so four basic ones with variations off each one. So blue's a basic, a basic, a basic pattern we run. And the plus one's just a variation on it. But in so saying that, the variation that you use depends on what the defense does, for how that's they exactly. That's what we plan around. So there's language if the nine comes, there's language if we play off nine or we play off ten. Again, we'll we'll preconceive that the week before if we want to play mainly off nine or mainly off ten. Um, we'll have a preconceived plan before we go into that particular game. Awesome. Thank you, coach. No trouble. Andrew, um, you briefly mentioned that uh, Atlanta had uh, seven phase and before they before they loosened up. Yeah. Um, do you have the same strategy for the other teams as well? Do they? Is there an average? Yeah, there is. Each each team is a little bit different. We just try and find patterns that we can. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, there is. Like I think very few teams get, can get past ten phases. To be honest. And so a lot of our defense practice was just on stamina, being able to stay in a structure and a line for a long time. 
um, and drills and skills around how we stay connected. Yeah, we, we, we try to do the opposite and hold the ball and take for long periods of time because, like I said, Atlanta, because they're so deliberate, if we could get past seven phases, we knew we were in with a shot against them. And the league puts out stats every week. And actually, hopefully, can you see that? Yep. Does that screen come up? Yep. So I'll get one of these every week that will tell me. Um, so for example, where the cursor is there, it's focusing on Atlanta. Now, they score 53.3% of their tries from first phase, and most of those are driving malls. You can see they've scored no tries past six phases. So defensively, if we can hold them for six phases, they'll either kick the ball back to us or they'll make an error. So there's a deliberate plan to try and stay in that fight for six phases against Atlanta because they've never scored past six phases. Does that make sense? Can you all see that? Yeah. Does that answer that? Yeah, it does. I think it's fair to say that in high school, it's only six phases, not 10. Um, yeah. Well, see, if we, we show ours, so we've scored, we've scored three of our 13 tries, 10 phases plus. Yep. So yeah, our, abilities, our abilities, and we hold the ball, not, you can see here, it's pretty evenly distributed across one to, one to six, and then a, a jump to 10. Right. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Coach, we have a question from the chat group. Uh, what's the time ratio on field practice versus video session? I'm assuming he means from, Matt means from the players. Yeah, for players, so they'll do video. Um, so if it's a Saturday, Saturday, Saturday week, Monday's review week. So we have our communication meetings, so attack meetings, attack group meetings, defense group meetings, which is video. And then we present back to the team uh, later on that day. And so that's a video session reviewing. During the week, line-out leaders will be watching line-outs, scrum leaders will be watching scrums and attack and defense crews will be picking pieces out of it. And then Thursday, sorry, Tuesday will be a defensive video presentation, which is usually 20, 25 minutes long, um, where it's a defense presentation. And then we go out on the field and put that into practice. Thursday is the attack presentation. And because we already have, most of our attacks already been worked on uh, weeks before, it's just going through any particular tweaks that we have. Um, so Thursday is the attack presentation again, 20, 25 minutes, and then out in the park. And that Thursday night is, a, is, a, is what we call our intensity night. So it's fast. It's half an hour of basic uh, full steam ahead, fast as we can. We try and have a referee there if we can, and putting it in place. So very few. We basically balls and play roughly in a game for 30 to 35 minutes. So we try and run for 30 to 35 minutes during that session, full pace, uh, just a shoulder on, not 100% not contact shoulder on, running a particular plan.